Hello and welcome to our channel. This year we ticked off one of our major travel bucket list items, a road trip in the stunning Outer Hebrides. In this video we head to our next port of call, the Uists. We discover more stunning beaches, fascinating history and go in search of a lost grizzly bear. We hope you enjoy this video and if you do, hit subscribe, turn on notifications and you won't miss any of our upcoming Hebridean road trip videos. We travel to Uist by Calmac Ferry from Barra, just a short 40 minute trip arriving on Eriske, the southerly most of the six islands that make up the Uists, the rest being South Uist, Benbecula, Grimsay, North Uist and Burnaray. As soon as we disembarked the ferry and hit the road, we could tell that these islands felt different. Each of the six islands is connected by a causeway and in between there are hundreds and hundreds of tiny locks and islands to explore. It really is an absolute sight to behold. Welcome to the Uists and the tiny island of Eriske where the ferry docks. But our first port of call is um, a tiny corner of Eriske in the bay behind us. The site of the sinking of the SS politician in 19, uh, sorry, 18 something. <laughs> and we're going to put it on the screen because we'll put it here. we can't remember and there isn't any phone signal Can't to check. check. Um, however, it was uh, a ship laden with cargo due uh, bound for America and it ran aground on some rocks and you'll see some rocks out in the bay in a moment and sank in the bay. Now, most notably, <laughs> it sank with 40 odd thousand bottles of whiskey. Bound what a tragic for, loss. Bound for America, a very tragic loss. However, story has it that lots of the locals helped to recover some of the whiskey um, but um, were quickly prevented from doing so by the authorities <laughs> but there's a small pub up the road called the AM Politician um, in memory of the ship that sank uh, and I'm sure if you went there and ordered a wee dram you might even get some tall tales. Well, we've not gone very far up uh, South Uist, but we thought we'd stop and grab a bite to eat. So we found a lovely spot on this gorgeous deserted sandy beach and we're going to cook up some sausages. And we're thinking of this as our second breakfast, like all good hobbits. Sausage is nearly done. Smelling good. Hot dogs a la beach. Very nice. Okay, we're good. Okay. I'm ready, let's go. <laughs> One of the things that we often do when we come away is like plan everything we want to do and see. And sometimes just spotting a brown sign on the side of the road and pulling off um, can reveal some pretty cool things. We uh, hope this time. We hope, certainly hope this time because we're on our way to find something called Hallen Roundhouses. Um, so I imagine they are ancient roundhouses um, and they're on a little bit of a walk through these nice dunes. Um, Hopefully, they are worth the pull off the side of the road. Love a good brown sign. Love a good brown sign. Success. We have found the roundhouses. In fact, there are the remains of three roundhouses here, dating from the late Bronze Age. And there are some information plaques behind me which are fascinating. They tell the history of Uist and the fact that there were settlements here from 6500 BC. It's really interesting to see the outline of these houses. Um, and they must have had a really sheltered spot on the dunes here. And you can hear the beach in the distance, a really nice spot. Um, right now there's a lady here from Uist Unearthed um, telling people about the site, which is very interesting. We 
We are now on North Uist and we are hunting out some stone circles and a woodland walk where I'm reliably informed by a friend who's been here that there are otters. We have found, we think this is pronounced Peerball Stone Circle, and it is absolutely huge. Um, so you can see kind of the stones, um, there's one there, <laughs> and the, the circle itself is absolutely massive. I don't know, how, how far across do you think this is? It's got to be 30 metres across. Yeah. It's got to be. Yeah. Absolutely huge, absolutely huge, and what a gorgeous... Um, location for it. Now unfortunately we don't know much more of the history of it because here comes a top tip. When you're coming to the Outer Hebrides make sure you download all of your trip research onto your phone or print it out or something like that because there is very very little phone service and I can't reload the pages that I had open um, which tell me about it. So we'll take a couple of nice shots, insert them here and give you a tiny voiceover to give you a bit more information. <laughs> The circle, which is actually an oval, overlooks Loch Langace and measures 38 metres by 28 metres, so pretty good estimate, Mac. It's made up of at least 48 stones. There haven't been any excavations at the site, so very little is known about why it was built or by whom, but it probably dates from the second millennium BCE. The stunning location and dramatic setting overlooking the loch makes it one of the most photographed sites on North Uist. Oh, <laughs> hello. Hello. <laughs> so, nothing over that hill, it just keeps on going. It's a false summit. But the people we're speaking to there just said that these are the only woods on the island. Um, the hotel there, the lodge, um, makes a point of saying that it's next to the only woods on the island. So, got to be in there. Do we have we told them what we're looking for? Yeah. Have we? I told them what we were looking for. No, have you told? Have you told? Have you told the viewers? Oh. No, maybe not viewers. <laughs> so we're looking for, well, two things. There's like a woodland trail where we might be able to see some otters. And there is a carved statue of Hercules the bear, who was a bear, a real bear. Um, and he was, well, I don't condone keeping bears in captivity for such things, but he was um, brought here for filming of a movie um, and he's been in all sorts of movies um, and escaped while he was here and roamed the land for a time until he was recaptured um, and if we find him and we find the plaque we might be able to tell you how long he was roaming for <laughs> stay tuned We're back off on the hunt for Hercules the bear. We pit stopped at the Langus Lodge Hotel for a couple of drinks and some very delicious scones. And while we were there, we hit the barmaid up for some information on Hercules the bear. Yep, yeah, so we found the woods. They were a short drive up from where we were. And we parked up and <laughs> we are rather out of breath. Because it's all uphill. Because it's all uphill. However, she did tell us that you can get to Hercules from the standing stones that we were at, it's just about a 40 minute walk. So technically we were in the right location. Not sure if we mentioned before, but these are the only woodland on Uist. It's a community managed woodland and it was planted in 1969 as an experiment by the Forestry Commission um, to grow trees in this environment. They were, the trees were specially chosen as they grow in a similar environment in Canada, which um, actually is on a fairly, well, it's on the same latitude as this. And so if you go that way, you get to Canada um, and um, they are absolutely thriving. It's a really gorgeous woodland, isn't it? They're absolutely beautiful. Feels very out of place. And I've missed trees um, since we've been on our Outer Hebrides oh, adventure. Oh, you, so. you've missed trees. <laughs> missed trees. Yeah, I've missed trees too. We've just seen some um, red toadstools in the woods. Uh, you know, red with white spots, you know, like toadstools that fairies live under. <laughs> um, never seen them before in the wild. Only in, you know, like 
Disney cartoons. Just had a quick stop for um, some midge spray because there's a few midges out tonight. Um, this is the stuff that we're using and I've got to say it seems to do the job okay. We're not sponsored by <laughs> smidge or anything um, but it seems all right. <laughs> is that the midge flew onto my nose and flew away again? It works all right? It's good. Yay! <laughs> we found Hercules. Oh, he's really big! Hercules the Bear came to the islands to film an Andrex advert in 1980 with his owner, um, but escaped on the island of Benbecula, um, which is a little way down between South and North Uist. He went on the run for nearly three weeks until he was found by a crofter. All of the islanders were out searching for him um, and he was um, recaptured sorry there are lots of midges here <laughs> recaptured safe and sound and went on to star in the james bond movie octopussy <laughs> Hercules the bear is actually buried here as well as his owner andy robbins who died in 2019 and there's a suspicious hole in the ground <laughs> where what? Hercules is buried. Is he escaped? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> to haunt the island? Yeah, I I've had a, I've had a look in there. I can't see any bear-shaped bones, so I think. We're okay. I, I think we're all right. After successfully locating Hercules, we left him in peace and headed out on quiet but dramatic roads to find our digs for the night. We found it easily and checked into the super cosy Wee Haven, but before we could settle down, we needed to eat. We were absolutely starving. A phone call and 10 minutes later and we were sitting in the warm and welcoming Dark Island Hotel gazing at their very extensive whiskey selection and ordering some delicious food, all to a very enjoyable 90s soundtrack. To start, we each had the Dark Island cured salmon, followed by Hebridean smoked salmon linguine. To top it off, as if we had room for more, Mac had the Earl Grey panna cotta and I had the dark chocolate tofu mousse. It felt gloriously decadent in this remote but surprisingly well-catered corner of Scotland. Good morning, it is a beautiful morning here on Uist. Let's give you a glance of what we can see from our cabin. Here we go, finally the sun has shown up for us. It's been, um, the weather's not been bad, but it has been cloudy most of the time. And look at today. The sun has shown up, it has got its hat on. And actually, this is a, an amazing spot for our little pod. There she is. And we'll link this below because it's been a fantastic little spot just for one night. Um, but we could stay here for ages. It's beautiful. So peaceful. Down here is the um, owner's yoga yurt and um, you can do uh, yoga, she does massage as well. And last night she had a, a class at the yoga yurt. I think there were like four or five people came to it. And we think it's hot yoga because the, uh, the smokestack there from a, obviously from a log burner was going. Um, so that must've been really cool. And the place we went for dinner last night is over by the wind turbine over there, the Dark Island Hotel. It was really nice and the staff were really friendly. 
Um, but anyway, I'm going to stop yabbering on. Check out this scenery. really sad to have to leave our little pod but I thought I'd just give you a quick room tour because it's so lovely you've got this great little seating area and a tv um over here all your tea and coffee making facilities and biscuits sleeping area over here shower room in there and you know what this on on the outside it looks really small but inside it does not feel cramped or squashed or sacrificed in any way the bed's super comfy little storage area there as well plenty of plugs nice little seating area this actually pulls out into a bed as well so i'm not quite sure how many sleeps three or four um but yeah absolutely perfect little spot for exploring these islands and of course showed you this earlier on what a view Starting off our last day in Uist by coming to Trinity Temple on North Uist. This was built in the 1100s and was a monastery, went through various iterations during its lifetime. It was destroyed, rebuilt a couple of times, but it was an important centre of learning and possibly one of the earliest universities in Scotland um, right up until the 19th century. This temple also has a bloody past. In 1601, it was the site of the Battle of Cairinis. Now, this battle arose because the resident MacDonald clan, one of them who was married to a MacLeod from Harris, wanted a divorce. Now, that really cheesed off the MacLeods from Harris, so a raiding party came across the water to beat up the MacDonald clan. Now, the resident clan took shelter uh, for themselves and their belongings here uh, and they defeated the um, raiding party of MacLeods. And the site down the hill there um, is um, the site where the battle took place. It was thought to be the last battle in Scotland to take place with just traditional weapons. So I imagine that to be like axes and swords and I don't know, picks and stuff like that. Must have been a horrible affair. Um, and the um, site down there is named the Ditch of Blood, which indicates that hardly any, um, if any at all, um, of the MacLeods made it back to see Harris again. I think Mac is overtaking me in terms of who who does a better fact Historical delivery. Facts. Historical facts. Historical with facts with Mac. Historical facts with Mac. <laughs> local smoked salmon so we stopped at the Hebridean smokehouse and we have some peat smoked salmon which looks incredible we bought some some nice crackers to have with it and also uh, a little gift set we're not gifting it to anyone we're going to drink it of uh, <laughs> um, island north Uist, um distillery gin um, so that looks like a nice evening in doesn't it that looks like the perfect evening in it does doesn't it so I'm just going to pop the smoked salmon in our cool box Keep that fresh. We couldn't leave the US and not visit one of the many beautiful beaches on offer here. So we have come to, I think this is Grenatoke Beach. I'll put a link below with the correct spelling because I have probably mangled that. And it is this massive flat expanse of sand with sand dunes um, on one side. But to be honest with you, it's so big and the tide is so far out. Um, 
It's just maybe a bit too big to be the most beautiful beach you've ever seen. And one of the other highly recommended beaches here is Burnaray. Um, so honestly, we're going to see if we've got time before our ferry to Lewis and Harris to hit up Burnaray Beach. So let's go and check that out. So as Sarah said, we're going to see if we can get to Burnaray Beach before we need to get our ferry. Um, and it's an interesting aspect to um, touring the islands like this is that having a ferry booking um, gives you a hard deadline. So I think our advice is plan a little bit longer than you think you're going to need, if you can, if you've got the time. Um, because I think we wish we had two nights on the Uists. Um, because there are some lovely places um, that we haven't managed to see. However, no regrets. We've enjoyed it, haven't we? Yeah, we've had a great time. Yeah. We are hustling to Burnaroo Beach. It's about a 10 minute drive from the ferry terminal. We've probably got about 20 minutes before we need to check in for our ferry. So we are hot footing it through a field of cows to get to what we think is the beach, hopefully. Fun fact, I'm terrified of cows. It's not a fun fact. <laughs> it's just a fact, Sarah, a fact. Hates, uh, Sarah hates cows. Oh, cows. cows. Um, scary. Yeah, so we're basically walking as fast as we can to see if we can just get a 10 second view of oh, this beach. Nice leisurely holiday. <laughs> we have to turn around and head to the ferry so well I think it was worth the walk Mac made me run the last couple of <laughs> meters across that field to get here on time <laughs> but it's beautiful absolutely it beautiful wrap up our stay on the Uist. Thank you so much for watching. Yeah, we've really enjoyed this actually. It's been a bit of a surprise to us, the Uists. Um, coming from Barra, where you could drive around the whole island in about 30 minutes, they're much bigger, aren't they? They're much bigger, yeah. So we definitely recommend maybe a couple of nights so that you don't have to rush. Definitely. But we are now on the way to the ferry from Burnaray to Harris. Uh, for the next leg of our journey, Lewis and Harris. So make sure you're subscribed and hit that bell notification so you don't miss out on that. And we'll see you next time. Thanks very much for watching.